revision rotator cup repair after healed reinforcement graft. We know that an initial benefit of reinforcement graft for complex tears is that it improves the healing rate, but a secondary benefit is for those patients like this one that suffer a recurrent injury. For instance, this patient suffered a traumatic recurrent injury more than a year after repair of a complex rotator cuff tear with reinforcement graft. We can see that the tear here is anterior to the previous rotator cuff tear that was repaired with the graft. And we can see that the graft is nicely incorporated and has given us a better quality of rotator cuff tendon. Once we've done our preparation, we establish a twist in cannula in the posterolateral and anterolateral quadrants to allow instrumentation along with our posterior and anterior cannulas. Those familiar with our techniques know that we prefer a transosseous tension band rotator cuff repair technique. So initially we drill the transosseous tunnel that's perpendicular. First this 2.9 millimeter socket is drilled at the medial aspect of the footprint and now the tunneling device is used to pass this green at the bond shuttle suture. For this repair we'll pass two permanent braided sutures through the tunnel Here we're looking at the healed graft that's fully incorporated and has given us a better quality rotator cuff tendon to work with. Here are two permanent braided sutures. We also prefer a tendon grasping suture configuration which requires three passes. Two passes create a mattress stitch and then the third pass is passed posterior on the outside of that mattress which creates a grasping configuration. This reduces the risk of a type 2 tear or sawing effect through the musculotendinous junction of the rotator cuff. So here we've done that for both of the transosseous sutures. Now we move ahead with the tension band portion of the repair. The idea of the tension band is that we want to neutralize the pull of the rotator cuff tendon and create uniform tension. So here we've created a socket with the punch well beyond the footprint and we're going to introduce a calcium biocomposite triple loaded rotator cuff anchor. We prefer the triple loaded anchor because it requires fewer anchors for the repair. The calcium biocomposite also improves ultimately the calcium concentration of the greater tuberosity which also improves the quality of the rotator cuff footprint. Again we use a combination of tendon grasping configuration along with mattress stitches and these are placed one at a time to reduce the rotator cuff anatomically. Here for the second one we're using a spectrum shuttle to pass this blue suture which will shuttle one of the limbs of the anchor in the appropriate anatomic position. Once all three limbs have been passed through the rotator cuff and the length tension relationship of the entire rotator cuff has been normalized, we will then follow up with tying the previously placed transosseous tunnel sutures to compress the entire rotator cuff footprint creating uniform compression for the entire rotator cuff repair. So here we can see that the rotator cuff has been reduced nicely and now we're going to finish up with the transosseous portion. You can learn more at theshouldercenter.com.